from treatment. Okay, so uh, and we sometimes get uh, rather difficult situations where we really need to analyze them very carefully. And this is a six-year-old child who presented to us five months after injury, having had the initial treatment with a bone setter, and she had just a minimal range. Really, while uh, the medial condyle has remained in the olecranon. So you have to plan how you would, whether you would do surgery or not, how would you approach it, what methods of reduction you would use, and how would you fix this fracture. So we decided on using an approach not often used in pediatric surgery, which was a trap approach, because I didn't want to do an olecranon osteotomy at this age. So we uh, took off the um, triceps uh, flap along with the anconius. Uh, that gave us a good exposure. Uh, when you see that, that is uh, what you can see of the olecranon with the medial condyle in it and the lateral condyle along with the shaft is anterior to the radial head. Uh, you need to do your... That's what it looks like, end on, and you need to osteotomize the fragment of the medial condyle which is actually united to the shaft there bring it along with the lateral condyle, get it provisionally reduced, get your screws across it and then you repair your triceps expansion and in this case because of the duration and there was still some instability at that time we actually put a, a wire across the joint which we removed at three weeks I left it in the cast for another two weeks before starting mobilization and this is her at four months post-op um, this is her at 20 months post-op, the one K-wire, smooth K-wire became loose so we had to take it out at some stage but the other two screws were holding good and this is her at 5 years post-op. So again from a, what looks like a very difficult situation you can regain a useful range of function uh, over a fairly long period of time. Now the problems of failures of diagnosis could be for various reasons. Sometimes the x-rays which are done initially are just not good enough. Uh, if you don't know about this particular injury where a medial epicondyle fragment can be incarcerated in the joint and you are going to miss it and that's going to end up in problems. Or sometimes injuries may be quite subtle. For instance, these undisplaced lateral condyle fractures may be very difficult to diagnose initially unless you do an oblique x-ray and uh, 10 days later this is evident because the fracture has displaced. Now we have a number of problems in managing these because these late presentations sometimes the surgery can be difficult. They are of varying presentations so it's difficult to draw guidelines for uh, every particular fracture and these guidelines are scarce and often dated and really if you try to look at the literature you can't find too much to help you except in certain groups of fractures. Okay, so this is another patient. Okay, this is a 12 year old boy, four months since injury, was treated in a cast. Uh, and this is what he's come to you with. Uh, if you look at the CT scans, you can see how the elbow is dislocated. Uh, the olecranon is um, malshapen with elongation. And here, because the child was 12 years old, it was possible to do an olecranon osteotomy. You shortened that excess segment which you took off as a wedge and then you fixed it back. Here we put a, a transcapitular pin into the radius again for a couple of weeks before we took it out. Uh, this was after the uh, pin has been taken out and this is at about three and a half months post-op. He's regained a reasonable range of motion and hopefully in the future follow-ups what we found is still about nine months to a year, these young children seem to regain motion. You don't give them any vigorous physiotherapy, just allow them to do their activities of normal day, uh, living and if the joint is okay, they tend to regain a reasonable amount of motion. This is another case who presented to us one year. Was it, uh, the x-rays that he had with him, you can see it was originally an elbow dislocation which was reduced and then he was not regaining a range of motion and I think they did a manipulation under anesthesia and he presented to us a year later with this kind of fixed block of bone in the anterior part and no range of motion. So here again, uh, if you look at it carefully, you get your CT scans, look at where the 
myositis or HO masses and then you couldn't plan your surgery because here it's connecting between the ulna and the humerus so we could approach it from the medial side take the entire sort of uh, flexor capi ulnaris onto the anterior side and that really allowed us a good exposure of this entire myositis mass which you can see there uh, you can gradually excise with an osteotome trying to stick to the planes of the original bone and that's the fragment which is excised at the end you need to further re uh, release all the adhesions so that you get a good range of motion on the table and then uh, what we do in these, uh, because here the elbow was stable, there was no instability, uh, we just put him in a slab initially, a cast in extension and then you open out the front of the cast and allow them early range of motion. And this is a six month follow up, you can see there is no recurrence or minimal recurrence of the HO and a good function at this stage. Uh, coming to some of the more common situations, supracondyl fracture. Now, we all know that if they come a bit late, we tend to leave them and do an osteotomy later, but this patient came to us six weeks with no motion and this kind of severe displacement. And here we really don't have guidelines as what to do. Do you leave it and then excise the uh, sort of bone later or do you do something? And um, what we decided was we went in medially and laterally, excised all the excess bone, shortened the humerus slightly so that there was no tension on our fixation and we fixed it with K-wires and this is at 10 months you can see there's no recurrence of that excess bone uh, and he's got a really fairly good range of motion so it's difficult to know what is the best thing to do at this stage general uh, dictum or sort of uh, uh, what we are told is not to, to do anything but really in these situations if you don't do anything he's going to end up with a stiff elbow for a long long time and then getting motion may be even more difficult. He has a four-year-old child, two weeks since injury, but also had a radial nerve palsy. Now, if he didn't have the radial nerve palsy, I might have left her alone. But because of that, we decided we'll go in, did an open reduction, uh, got the fragments reduced, the radial nerve was okay, it was just stretched. Uh, uh, the implants were removed at five months. This is a three-year follow-up, and this is a seven-year follow-up. Again, good range of motion, and good anatomy at this stage. Uh, unfortunately, compartment syndromes like this, although probably less than we did before, we still see, and this is something you really feel bad for when it happens, and we need to try and avoid it at all costs. We also see some late Hochman ischemic contractures, and there we can release all the muscles, take out all the necrotic bone, and get back a reasonable function, as long as they have some motion or some active uh, uh, sort of function of their muscles. Lateral condyle is the next group where we often see patients coming late and we, that was discussed earlier in the previous session and here's where uh, the same case which I showed initially where the initial x-rays you can't see anything. This is one at 10 days and about a month later when uh, this child presented to us, you can see it's clearly displaced and you know, we went in, we did an open reduction. This was a very young child, so we just used K-wires. This was after the wires were removed and the function at that stage. So uh, again, uh, a lot of these we fix uh, certainly up to three months down the line. We have no hesitation in going ahead and doing an open reduction and internal fixation. We've done it as late as seven or eight months. I think beyond six months, it starts getting a little more tricky. Uh, what we do see often is these late presentations with tardy ulna, nerve palsy and a valgus deformity. And here, if they are not bothered about the deformity, you can just do a ulna nerve neurolysis. In this case, she wanted her deformity corrected. So we went from the medial approach, released the ulna nerve, did an osteotomy uh, with the plate here. So you got a good correction of the deformity as well. And this is her 14-month follow-up. You can see that she's got a good function. We did not interfere with the non-union here because it was a stable non-union um, without any problems of motion. Uh, what we see otherwise is this sort of uh, unstable situation. This is about a year after injury. And here what uh, you can see, there's a significant instability of the elbow. You go in, uh, freshen out the non-union, get a nice tricortical draft, wedge it in, and fix it with screws. Make sure you get back full range of motion. I think this is also important that you try and get back full range of motion 
at surgery so that you don't have a problem with stiffness later. This is her six months post-op and two years later you can see again good function, the uh, non-union has healed and a good stable elbow as well. Uh, Montagia lesions is the next big group that we often see. Uh, this could be missed initially, it may be inadequately reduced or there is failure of maintenance or reduction. This is an interesting case. Who, this was the initial x-ray, it was reduced and looked reasonably good but if you look at it very closely, she does have a little bit of angulation there of the ulna and a slight subluxation of the radial head. The main problem was she also had a posterior introscious nerve palsy with it so we decided we'll go in and that's the posterior introscious nerve, you can see how adhered it is with fibrous tissue, we had to release that and then we did an osteotomy in the ulna, corrected that and as well got the radial head back exactly centered on the capitulum and this is a 10 month follow up you can see how she is doing well with a good range of motion and function at this stage. This, the more common variety with the anterior dislocation of the radial head is what we see very often and here uh, we have a kind of uh, uh, various options in the literature basically if you plan to operate you need to correct the ulna length and angulation reduce the radial head and then maintain reduction and our surgical strategy generally was to go through a posterior approach extend it to the radial head with the void uh, approach you do an osteotomy recreate the fracture correct length and angulation and in some of the cases we would do an annular ligament reconstruction and sometimes even a transcapitular k wire fixation but today uh, using these step cut osteotomies we can get a good amount of angulation and distraction and then correct it and so the incidence of doing annular reconstructions and certainly capitular, transcapitular pins has reduced significantly. This is uh, the follow up and at about a year down the line again good function and a good range of motion. Uh, we extend this sometimes, I don't know what is the deadline, maybe three years is where you start wondering whether it's safer to just excise the head but that has its own problems. So here, 14 year old, 4 years since injury, again you have to in these do an open reduction of the radial head, that's your step cut osteotomy, you distract and angulate it, you can see the amount of distraction we've got with the angulation but because of the step cut, you don't need to use bone grafts, uh, this is a 2 year post-op, some restriction of um, full pronation but very good uh, range of movement and function in this situation. So in conclusions, I think elbow injury